Thanks, sir, and uh, I'm happy that uh, today we are on, not on the last day like we had a few years back. I think this is one of the sessions I really like because the content and format, especially the uh, three of you uh, last talks, really inspired me to come here uh, more often. So question always asked, I know financial interest in this, I do receive grants for a lot of my work, but this is not going to affect my talk in this, uh, in this session. So question is, why do I do need to do research? It's a very commonly asked question, what really brings in? One of the most important thing is, we are all trying, we are all like be becoming like uh, assembly line uh, products. We all are trained in the same way, we all are doing the surgery the same way, we all, at the end of say maybe a two or three years, there's hardly any difference between your colleague or your friend or in your practice. So that helps to differentiate and there's always the dream that, you know, I should be noticed, I should be, should be probably in a different league. Then how can I beat this? So the part of research is about every step, being mindful of every step you take and what you do. So what you consider today as the most important thing, the, the hottest thing in your branch probably will not be the same. So uh, 18 years back when I started, uh, our sister institute is uh, the Narayan Rudhyalaya and that was the time I just had come into the family and I met Dr. Devi Shetty and he said, uh, you know what, if you are doing exactly the same as your father-in-law has done, then it's a, it's a totally failure. And he said it to his son also, if you do exactly the same, I said, you know, you all have reached the benchmark of, of institute, you, you created the Narayana Health and all that. How can I be a failure if I just do the same thing? Because it's a success story. So he said, uh, your future is not an extension of your past. The past is over. So that kind of made me start thinking. It's a very interesting paper, uh, which is just published in Cell. And uh, people who read this kind of work know that Ali Prokhamani is kind of an advisor to the government of US for many, many presidents except the present one. I don't know why. You, you, your guess is as good as mine. but. He talks about these things. Your next generation of medicine is going to be by this. It's not that it's going to be completely off. Your research, sorry, your present thing is going to be totally taken off. You still do cataract, you still do it. But if you want to be known, you have to work on all this. So what's research? Get your basics, get to challenge your limits, and uh, add some spice, you know, your awards, accolades, all that's it's a trigger. Not all research gives you the same kind of a picture. You know, we all expect it to be a parabolic. You know, it's sorry, it's the normal distribution. You have a bell curve, everybody reaches the top. Most of the time we are in the paranormal types. What are the real barriers for research? I'll come, you, come to what research is a little later. Lack of facilities, lack of knowledge. Statistics is a major thing. That is where I think Dr. Akshay and uh, will tell you about this. I don't have time to read papers. I don't know how to get the papers. I don't understand the jargon. All of us started with the same thing. I did not come from an institute which had research, nor I had that background. It's just about making time. So what really makes a difference in research is not really having all the funding. It's just about how you see things differently. All the people here are phenomenal researchers. It's not that you ask them, was it money? Was it grants? Was this for the institutes they represent? I don't think so. They all see things differently. So every researcher uh, you meet or talk, it's just that you are trying to see something differently. So you have to drop your story. When I say drop your story is you have a free notion of everything. I will not do research because I don't know statistics. I do not do research because I don't have a lab. I will not do this. I, you need, it's all a story. So it's important that uh, you, s you drop that story off from your uh, line. I use this slide very often because uh, once I met a Nobel laureate, he was in chemistry, and I asked him what really, what was the real one thing you want to give advice to my residents and fellows. He had come to our institute. He was a Nobel laureate in 2005 or six in chemistry. 
He says, when somebody asks you as smooth as butter, a scientist in you should ask, at what temperature? I mean, that is what true research is. It's not your lab, it's not your science. I explained about all these things. So the way we do it is you start mingling with different people. If you really want to do research, you have to go to a different conferences sometimes. You go to conferences where you pick up ideas. Uh, in, in our branch, you go to the same ASCRS, ESCRS, we hear the same people, the same talks. Go to ARVO, go to EVA, go to uh, science meeting. One ARVO will probably get you maybe 50 ideas. Out of 50 ideas, one or two will materialize. And you'll realize that you can do it in your own clinic. You don't need something different. You have to mingle with people differently, you know. Talk to people. When you go, you meet somebody in your flight, uh, you ask if somebody says that so it is from material science, talk to them, uh, meet in your family. You have no idea how much you can get, how many research you can do when you talk to people. Your family members may be doing some work in some area, some branch which might help you. There's always magic in small things. So I'll, when I started, this is, used to be my OT day at the end of the day. Lenticules, epithelium, tears, multiple things. People who work with me at that point of time used to wonder what, how is it ever going to help you? The first thing is do not discard anything. Keep it on. One day or the other it will help you. So we never realized that this day, and this used to be, this is how our fellows work. They have to be part of this also along with surgeries. They get a postings. They get to do all these things in the lab. They understand what this is done. So everybody gets a chance to be part I call it, you know, you dirty your hand with chemicals, which is not, uh, not your glove. So what happened was, we were looking at LOX, which is a, a collagen enzyme, which holds the collagen. And all that preserving will, I'll just example, give you an example of how this helps. This one case turned out to be an ectasia. Because we had preserved that lenticule at that point of time in 2014, you can see all that uh, with the MK medium. So we had to take it out and we found a totally new gene in the branch of refractive surgery which is called the lysol oxidase genetics which means that all that efforts of preserving pays off with one golden will pay off one golden day where you find a completely novel thing which will shake the earth. Because then people started looking at it. They said okay it's just not topography. So what do we do? So many times in research, you just stop at one zone and you don't move forward. I have a paper, I have, this is one everywhere, so that's it. So what we had to do is, there's, there's no full stop to research on any subject. You keep moving. So after you find something, what do we do? Oh, now we have found a new gene in uh, Ectasia. Can we do something? So we start looking at building a kit. And when you, how do you build a kit? A any kit you do, you need antibodies. How do you get antibodies? You have to get an animal lab. But what do you do with the animal lab? You, uh, you inject to the rabbits. They, get, they produce antibodies. Put it on a chip. And then, now, this is a prototype. You, it is like a plug-in-play. So it can be, if when you commercialize it, this will be a plug-in-play. That means you plug that chip into that, uh, that box, that will tell you the status of inflammation of your eye. It used to be dry eye, pre-op screening. Maybe tomorrow you can even do a vitreous samples. And this is how the whole journey starts. Now, for example, now how do you use this? You're doing some surgery called PRK. You do whether you want to do it cross-linking, not cross-linking. You look at the status and this keeps happening. And you can, you know, these are all the areas of applications for this. Again, a researcher can stop there and say, I've done with this. That's why there's no question of, I have a minute? Right. So there's no question of ending anything. So what did we do? I find if it's low, I find the collagen in your eye low, what can I do more? So we started looking at new drugs. And what's very interesting here is, <coughs> the drugs, you don't need to create something. The cell, if you read, like I said, if you read your mm -hmm. cell biology, you can see that, a simple curcumin, a medical grade turmeric, 
is the most anti-inflammatory drug which will change the collagen. So then we patented this. So this is, I'm just giving an example of a life of a researcher plus a clinician. Because many times, for example, this paper says that we do not have any real benchmark to find the outcome of simple thing like a lubricant, which lubricant work, which does not work. So you'll always have to find that space when there is a huge question mark. So when you looked at this paper, if you don't have something which can tell you the outcome of dry eye, and this is editorial in ophthalmology, you feel, okay, there is an opportunity now for us to work on it. And like I said, the immune trafficking is the keyword buzzword today. So we use a very simple, uh, earlier used to do a, 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 we used to call the uh, conjunctal impression cytology. Now we patented this using a new technique where you can use the same kind of a, a patent to study the cells. So I'm just skipping into this. It's just not science. Research can work on mind also. We are using psychological profiling in patient undergoing surgery and to see which kind of personalities you need to avoid surgery basically so that you are peaceful in life. Mathematics, just trying to, Im that means that you as a clinician, to sum up, this is my last slide, you don't have to sacrifice anything. I have the same amount of uh, uh, practice like any one of you, but you can still do everything and you can do it better than a pure scientist because you are the one who are going to translate it to your patient. Your scientist cannot translate it. And if there is one person who is the best person to take the science forward, it's you. Thank you. <laughs>